Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Elitist Geek and a miscellaneous VR video. Uh, basically dealing with uh, questions and answers that I've been getting in the comment section of the videos. Uh, it's getting to the point now where trying to answer a lot of comments is getting tougher because the volume has just seriously, it's like a steep uphill climb. It's going crazy volume wise. I'm still always going to try to answer stuff, especially if it's, um, you know, issues that you're having because that's one thing I want to be able to do on this channel is to help others. You know, the way you guys assisted me with getting my Vive issues resolved and I've been able to do that already to date, you know, um, over half a dozen of you that have had issues that have reached out and helped you guys. So that's a good thing that I want to keep doing. But it's really getting to the point where answering everything is getting tough. I read them all. Just moving forward, it's, realistically, I'm just not going to be able to do it. It's, it's getting to that point. So what I'm going to do is a lot of questions that I get commonly asked. Every once in a while, come out with a video where I answer those. But again, it won't mean I just stop doing that. It's just in case you fall through the cracks, you had a question, somebody else answered it. At least I can get it out on, on a video like this. So... First thing I want to talk about was yesterday's news video, which I should never have filmed so late. I was way too tired. It's great entertainment. Like I cracked myself up looking at it today because I was so obviously tired. I had a work issue come up yesterday and uh, I didn't get to the video stuff until pretty much around midnight before I could even get it posted. When I had my wife check the editing, she's like, yeah, the sound's okay, but... Uh, you look like you're falling asleep. And sure enough, I mean, I was fighting yawns in there like crazy trying to fight them. And it shows. And my brain was just a wreck, right? It was it was mulch. So screwing up edge of nowhere, calling it edge of somewhere, where it was basically a headline. When I prepare for these news, what I generally do is I'll have three snippets in a word file, right? And I will talk, I'll have a section called headline, source, and then the article itself. The headline is usually the headline for the piece itself, either from the website or one that I've created. The source is the link and the article is what I'm going to talk about, right? Like the main points of what I want to talk about. Well, my headline had uh, edge of somewhere because that's the headline. If you look at that link and see their headline, that's what they used. So I dyslexically reverse that. And anyways... Uh, it's funny to go back and watch, but next time I'll hold off and I'll probably just <laughs> film it the next day uh, when I'm a little more awake, like right now, right? And make it a two-parter if I have to. So anyways, like I said, it's good for comedy relief. So on to some of the discussions that have been taking place and some common questions that I see. So the, the, the first one has to do, it's a recent one about the marketing or the um, space Sony is recommending for tracking in virtual reality and I believe it was Chris Bauer one of the viewers he commented that you know it's a marketing ploy and uh, you know when I read that I was kind of like hmm, I didn't think of it that way but let's take another look went back to the article and what what I missed because I was so damn tired last night the first time around was if you look at the space Sony actual illustration that Sony uses to talk about that in that brochure it's a seated VR experience. The person is clearly seated, not standing, right? So that got me thinking, okay, could it be that that is all seated requirement space? And sure enough, digging into that article and some of the links that, that go off of that article, it looks like it's because of the camera technology that Sony uses. It's a legacy camera, and I get that. They don't want people, because let's face it, they probably sold a lot of those PlayStation cameras this year to go to people and say, okay, you know what? If you want VR, that camera you just bought isn't going to work. So for whatever reason, they've retained that camera as the camera they're going to use for virtual reality. But apparently the tracking requirement for it needs that space. So it seems to be just a function, pure and simple, of the older camera that they're using, the way it does the tracking. So... Because if you look at their own literature, they show standing VR experiences. Are 
is that just a marketing twist, right? Are they just showing them standing? But really, we're talking about seated experiences. Well, we'll know as we get closer when things come out or as people get to try those demos. I haven't tried them yet. I can't comment. But as soon as I can, I will. So that has to do with uh, the Sony PlayStation. The other thing is, the, is just a thank you for all the Minecraft stuff. I now have a way better understanding of Minecraft and understand that these official ones kind of match up with my first hunch, which was, you know, these are modded solutions for virtual reality. The other ones upcoming are official. But like with anything, official doesn't mean it's going to be better. So it could well be that the Minecraft VR experience ends up being the better experience. I won't know. I'm not a huge Minecraft guy, but in VR, I'm probably going to use it a lot more than I ever would without, right? I don't know how much more, but I'll definitely go back to it because I did think it was kind of fun, right? They did, VR seems, put it this way, VR seems a natural fit for Minecraft, right? Which really, virtual Legos, virtual building blocks. So, so on to the questions here, guys. Um, one question that Jason Idiom, another viewer asked, but I get asked a lot is, does virtual reality realism dim over time? And the simple truthful answer to that is, Yes, it does. The brain can be fooled, but it's hard to fool the brain for long, right? Once your brain, your human, awesome, magnificent brain that we have has been used to an experience, it adapts to the experience, right? So a good example of that is me with my fear of heights, right? I still get that reaction in VR games, but it has definitely lessened. But I still get it. I still get that sinking gut, weak need feeling whenever I'm on a cliff in a VR game. But the more I do it, the easier it gets. So definitely over time, you know, the realism does diminish. That doesn't mean that the experience diminishes, but fooling your brain. And another good example of that is some of the frights that you get, right? Like when I played Hordes the first time, it scared the crap out of me. Now, I don't even blink. I'm totally desensitized to it because my brain knows these seven and eight foot tall zombies lumbering towards you can't really hurt you, right? So again, the answer to that is yes, it does diminish, but that doesn't mean that that's a bad thing. That's just the reality. How many beers do I drink a night is a question. I actually get messaged this a lot. Look, it's kind of my thing, right? I start the video and I'll do another one right now with a cheers. I love me a good brew, but I really honestly only drink one or two beers most nights. Fridays and Saturdays, I make exceptions. I may have as many as three or four, but four would be a very rare maximum. Generally, one or two. So if you see me on a night where I've had two videos, the second one is higher than the first beer level. Well, I've either, it is a second beer, right? Uh, that's mostly the explanation. But yeah, there's obviously there's times where I drink more, but generally it's only one or two. And the next question that I get asked most often with beer is what beers do I like? Now, I'm a Canadian boy, so you would think that I love my Canadian beers, but I'm also European. I'm an immigrant from a different country, I, you know, when I was very young. So I love my Dutch beers. Northern European beers are probably my all-time favorite because I love strong beers and... Uh, you know, my homeland, Holland, has a lot of awesome, strong beers. Bavaria, one of my favorite, uh, it's, you know, pretty much 8%, almost 9% alcohol content. And again, it's for taste that I drink this, not to get drunk or any kind of other thing, right? So uh, Belgian beers, usually Flemish Belgian beers, so like kind of the Dutch-speaking north. And for any Belgian viewers... Flams, Vatic, but hey, as far as anybody else is concerned, it's still part of the Dutch language, right? However you want to, however you want to call it. So, yeah, Belgian beers, generally Flemish ones, Dutch beers, German beers, Danish beers. Those would be my top four beer go-to countries. Uh, if I'm drinking a Canadian beer, which I actually happen to be drinking right now, it's probably going to be something, well, North American one, like Black Label. This is an 8% beer, considered a pretty cheap beer here, but I actually, I love the taste. I like strong beers. 
Um, so it's not that I don't like UK beers. I just haven't tried a lot. So if you guys know of any that get exported here, I'll definitely try them, right? Uh, but those are my go-tos. Uh, did I get my Vive working again? So a lot of people ask me that. They've only seen the videos where I complained about the customer service and we went through that whole rigmarole. But yes, the answer to that is I did get my Vive working. It's working 100%. Uh, my Rift as well got that issue addressed. So I have two 100% functioning units. Happy with both. Love them. Which ties into the next question, which I get asked probably my third, fourth ranked most asked question is, which do I like better? Now, I'm always clear on this channel about not being a fanboy. It is about the frickin' games, period. Whatever allows me to play games better or more games of is what I gravitate to, which is exactly why I bought both. I bought both. Yes, it hurt the bank account, <laughs> absolutely. But I bought both because I want to play the maximum amount of VR games that I can, right? I'm going to do the same with the Sony PlayStation VR. I want, I love VR. I want to support it, which is the other reason, right? So I'm going to invest in all of these mainstream ones. If you forced me by gunpoint right now, you said, look, you've got to pick one of these for the desert island that we're going to banish you on. You have to pick one. This point in time, right now, I would pick the Vive because of the room VR. It just allows me to play more games. I can play almost all the seated stuff plus the room VR games, right? But it's as simple as this, guys. Right now, if the Rift's VR, uh, you know, room VR solution was as good, it would be the Rift that I pick. And that's really what it boils down to. Now, we're still talking about a 1A, 1B scenario here. These are like, on a scale of 10 where 10 is perfect, we're talking a 9.9 .9 for number one and a 9.8 for number two. Like, they're that close. It's not like one's a 10 and one's a six. I truly do love both of these that much, right? And my time is honestly split about 50-50 between them. That's the truth. Um, most of the seated stuff I do, I do on the Rift. Most of my room VR stuff, I do obviously with the Vive. So you can see it's the games driving it, not any kind of fanboyism, right? Just not interested in that. So there you go. That's the answer. If I had to pick one right now, it would be the Vive. A year from now, you ask me that. Let's assume Rift gets all that shit together, right? They still have the clearer image because they don't have the blurriness of text, which I do believe is a hardware limitation of the Vive lens that they're using. It'll be the Rift that I pick, right? If they get that all addressed. So there you go. Now, the uh, last one to talk about has to do with God Rays. I get asked this a lot. And honestly, God Rays aren't something that have bothered me. That's probably why I haven't talked about them a lot. But yes, they are noticeable, primarily in Elite Dangerous, which leads me to believe that it's probably not, you know, a lens thing or a hardware thing with the Rift, but it very well could be. I'm not sure. I'm not an engineer expert on that, right? But uh, yes, in Elite Dangerous, God Rays are way more visible than they are for the Vive. The Vive has them, but way much less pronounced. But with that said, the more pronounced on the Rift doesn't bother me one bit. So hopefully that answers that. But I'm going to look into this more now that I'm playing a lot of those crossover games, games that both platforms support. I'm going to be looking for stuff like God Rays. And moving forward, I will definitely comment on it. All right, guys. Next up is a news video. Hopefully you found this informative and it's answered some of those questions. If you're one of the people who've answered or asked me one of these questions in the past. As always, guys, news video coming up next. And cheers. Have an awesome one.